This edition of Mac Voices is supported by you, our viewers and listeners, through our new Patreon campaign. If you get value from Mac Voices, please consider helping support the show by visiting patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the, the, the authors over at Take Control Books are always taking control of something. This time, though, we have a brand new title from Mr. Jeff Carlson. It's called Take Control of Your Digital Storage for Mac. Jeff, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me back on. It's good to be here so so soon. Yes, well, it's always it's always a pleasure. But this one, I'm I'm really intrigued by. Um, take control of your digital storage for Mac. So, I can presume that this would include lots of things, and I don't know how we're going to get through them all. <laughs> um, hard drives, uh, cloud storage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. RAIDs, NASes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, yes, is, yes. Is that a pretty fair assessment? It is, yeah. I mean, it, it is admittedly a pretty broad topic um, because, you know, way back when, when you were talking about storage, you were either talking about, you know, well, way, way back when you were talking about a floppy disk, um, you know, or two floppy disks that you would have to swap in and out, if you remember from the, the very old uh, Mac SE days. Um, but, you know, for most people, when they think of storage, they think of like the hard drive singular in their computer and that's that's where everything is stored and they don't have to think about it which is you know then they don't have to think about like the specifics of how it works or where things are stored or all of that like it just it just all happened well over time as we've discussed before and you know um storage needs increase we have you know digital photos that take up gigabytes and terabytes of data we've got digital video we've got i mean i'm sure you know you working on video and audio stuff, you probably have more hard drives and have dealt with all that like up to your ears. And so the question is, you know, where do we where do we go from that one hard drive that's in your computer? And how do we how do we manage all of that? Because um, especially these days where we have, you know, like a MacBook Pro will have less storage than it used to because they're all now uh, solid state memory. And solid state memory is more expensive. And so it's not unheard of to go from having, you know, several hundred gigabytes to a 256 gigabyte hard drive. And suddenly you're like, OK, well, I'm happy that I have my, you know, new thin portable MacBook Pro. But what am I going to do with all the stuff that was on this other hard drive? You know, do I put it on an external drive? Do I send it to the cloud? Do I get a NAS? And so uh, this book was, was written just trying to answer those questions like, okay, you probably have some storage need, whether that's, you know, expanding beyond what you have or replacing what you have. Um, where do you go? And there, as, as I can attest, there are lots of different routes of investigation and research and rabbit holes and blind alleys. And so, you know, if if nothing else, I hope somebody reads this book and says, ah, okay, now I have a direction of where I can go. And I don't have to spend 10 hours trying to figure out what are the important uh, features to look for when buying a NAS. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. In fact, your your example of the, the, uh, the MacBooks was exactly where I was going to go. Because it, it and, and before this interview, actually, I was tearing apart and, and rebuilding an external hard drive for another device that has nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of the point is that the that storage needs storage needs have changed in so many ways. And and again, you're right with video, but you're a photography guy. And, oh yeah. And your photos have gotten bigger, a lot mm -hmm. bigger. And especially if you shoot raw, it gets even bigger. So you. And, and I know that the photographers don't like to throw much of anything away if they don't have to. So you automatically probably have to buy, you know, a few terabytes every, well, I don't know, every so often. I'm not sure how often. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, it is a challenge. And now I guess the good news is we have so many new storage options, but that's the good news. The bad news is that they can be pretty confusing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it's also a thing where, you know, it – it would not surprise me at all if a lot of people who are watching this have never really thought about storage because they haven't really needed to. Um, you know, like 
that your hard drive works. That's great. Um, you should also be thinking about backups, um, which I go into in in a little bit of detail. But um, you know, Joe Kissel's Take Control of Backups book like really shines in that st- that area. But you know, like again, it's it's storage. What are you backing up? Where are you backing it up to? And all um, all of that. Um, and and like we shouldn't have to think about storage. You know, like like at the absolute like basic basic level. You know, we're, we're talking about how the computer moves data on a, you know, a, a spinning platter or, uh, you know, like little cells of a, a uh, solid state memory um, device. Um, you know, we shouldn't have to think about that. And most people don't until something goes wrong or something goes weird or you realize that, you know, um, I'm going to like, for example, um, one of the. One of the topics in the book uh, is an outgrowth of macOS High Sierra, where suddenly everybody had to think about, okay, um, I have, say, a MacBook Pro or something with solid state memory, and I'm going to upgrade to macOS High Sierra. Well, my file system automatically changed to APFS, Apple File System. Uh, what does that mean? You know? Like, 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 like that's the the absolute underlying technology behind getting storage, you know, from one place to another, and how your computer reads it, and you know, I think Apple has done a pretty good job of of making it fairly seamless. Where, you know, basically it was, this is going to happen whether you want it or not. If you have a, a an SSD, so um, you know, we'll take care of it, and you won't even really have to think about it. But then later on, you do have to think about it. So for, <laughs> I mean, you know, for like like as a very uh, practical example, um, you know, so my MacBook Pro um, now runs APFS, um, and there are there are advantages to that in terms of how files are copied and um, it makes you know, these snapshot backups and things like that that that, that I cover in the book. Um, but I also want to have a, a time machine backup. And so the question is, well, does my time machine drive, should that also be formatted as APFS? Um, and, uh, you know, my, my time machine backup is not an SSD, so I can format it as APFS, I think, maybe. What should I do? You know, like like those sorts of questions arise because, um, you know, in, in this case, APFS is is very much a, a, a transitional story stage technology. So, you know, they, um, Apple implemented it with SSDs um, by default because that file system actually has um, some definite advantages for SSDs in terms of how, how data is written. Um, but um, they did not extend it to using it for startup disks that are, that are mechanical disks. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you dig a little bit, and then you realize you have to dig a lot more in order to get the right answers. And all the all the while, you're doing the thing that we always do, which is like, like, am I doing this the right way? Am I going to screw something up? You know, <laughs> yeah. like, like, like it, it, if I format this as APFS uh, down the line when I need to, you know, need to pull off some files from my backup, is it going to be like, oh, sorry, it didn't really work, and you know tough for you. So things like that, that, um, you know, a big reason that, 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 uh, take control and I, excuse me, did this in the first place was, um, a lot of reader, reader questions, reader feedback, sort of asking, you know, just these questions. And so, you know, Joe Kissel, he was like, Hey, we need to do this book. And I was like, Hey, let's do this book. (laughs) And so now here it is. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's too bad. Apple has that's exactly repu- how our meetings go. To, by the way, no. oh, is it okay? That's, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, Sorry. That, Sorry. that cuts down on the arguments. <laughs> um, yeah, it, Apple Apple tries to make things simple, but unfortunately, <laughs> as, as we try to move forward and transition from one thing to another, you know, it, it's not quite as simple. And you know, at a time we used to all use Macs, and so we didn't have to choose like what what 
we formatted our drives with. And I'm not even talking about Apple file system. But now there are various flavors of, of Mac OS formatting. And then you have to decide, are you going to share this disk with Windows? Or is it going to be an external drive that's going to get plugged into Windows? And after a while, you can drive yourself crazy because the the initial the the acronyms and everything are there, mm -hmm. but you don't know what they mean, and they they make you crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, the compatibility is is a really great example. Um, again, you know, with, with APSF, APFS. <laughs> I'm going to say APSF like a million times. Yeah. I had to like when, when we were writing, I had to do so many search and replaces to make sure that I hadn't <laughs> mistyped that. It's it's sort of silly. So with with, with APFS, um, let's say you do have a um, like an external uh, SSD that you can plug in, um, which which is great. It's it's nice and super fast. Um, and let's say you know you want to deliver a whole bunch of like big video files or something to a client or to a friend or to to somebody else. If they're not running High Sierra or Sierra, that's useless. Like they they can't access it at all. Um, a, a curious thing: Apple's documentation says that um, it's only compatible with with Sierra. I'm sorry, with with High Sierra, um, you know, and and they're very specific in many areas. They're like, you know, if you try to run this on on Mac OS Sierra, it, it will not be read, and yet it will be read at some point. They they added support for reading that, but not like having it as a as a boot drive. And so, you know, again, like all these little nooks and crannies that uh, you know we ran into, and and hopefully people are not going to run into when they have this knowledge. And I don't want to go too far, far down the APFS, <laughs> APFS, yeah, a yeah. rabbit hole. Um, but I, I do have to mention that uh, in my experience so far, you you have to be just a little worried and maybe make sure your backups are done a little more often or a little more reliably because a lot of the disk utilities that we all depend on to recover a damaged disk aren't up to speed yet with, with APFS. Yeah. And, you know, that's – there's no solution to it other than just make sure you've got really good backups, frequent and and complete. So yeah. that if, you, if something goes wrong, you can restore completely instead of trying to fix what you have. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there, there are – there are things about the technology that make that that easier. Um, you know, like like for example, again, not to get too deep in the rabbit hole, but um, you know, when you apply a system update, um, the uh, macOS automatically creates a snapshot, which is just like a frozen in time what your disk, what all the files looked like. Um, it, it just does this in in the background, and so if something were to go wrong, you can restart from your recovery drive by holding command R at startup and it, it lets you sort of um, kick right into um, the, the, the like special partition um, that has disk utility. And, um, and, and so then you can use the restore from time machine command to just go right back to that to that stage, which is great because like it's all local. You don't have to go and, you know, boot off of a, a, a duplicate backup that you have. So like something like that, like it's great. But it doesn't always apply. So, you know. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. and, and that's not to say that APFS is bad or, or, or unstable or anything. Oh, no, because, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's very cool. It's, yeah. It's, it's new. And uh, from what I understand and, and, and from a lot of the reading that I did, um, Apple has not done the best job of documenting it. Um, and that's why a lot of the disk utilities um, – you know they they have you know like conditional support for APF, APFS or <laughs> or you know like like they they're not ready to, to do it yet because you know remember like like this is the ground level underlying how do we take a bit of data and and put it somewhere you know and it was it was necessary. I mean, this was like you said. It was a ground level, and it was a ground level rebuild too, mm -hmm. for yeah. th the more modern world where our file sizes are larger, and we have things like we started out at the top of the show, NAS drives and cloud drives and thumb drives and external mm -hmm. drives and SSDs and fusion drives and and on and on and on. So, you know, it's it, it was necessary. But it does just introduce a little bit of uncertainty, and you got to be educated to it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Jeff, um, so 
I, obviously, as we always say, we're not going to get you to recite the book here. That would be crazy. <laughs> but but there is one Despite thing. Despite my best intentions yeah. so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow morning at uh, 3.30 a.m. Um, <laughs> no. Talk to me a little bit about, about cloud storage and the, the two cloud services that I think everyone know about and, and everyone use to one degree or another are iCloud and Dropbox. Mm-hmm. And I assume they get a pretty detailed treatment in the book. They do, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, uh, it's not like a, you know, here's how to use them. It's more, um, you know, when are these, uh, when are these services uh, good, to, like, 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 sorry, what, what circumstances are, are good for these types of services? Um, you know, like, like for example, um, iCloud Drive. Uh, iCloud Drive has this very cool feature that um, optimizes Mac storage. And um, that is what that does is um, anything that's in your your uh, desktop or documents folders or in um, like the actual like the iCloud Drive uh, folder. Um, if if your disk is starting to fill up, uh, Apple will basically delete those files because they're backed up to the cloud, and then make them available for you um, on demand. And that's you know it's it it's a neat technology. It's smart um, in that you know it it's not just you know wiping things out. It it leaves like a little you know icon, and uh, so you you can still get to it. But it also has that assumption that well, of course you're connected to the internet, right? Or of course you're connected to a you know a a decent internet connection speed. And so, um, what's what confuses people about this is, um, you know, again, Apple is good about sort of making it all invisible and background, and so you don't have to think about it. Except that also means that um, that it's not entirely clear uh, what has been, uh, you know, removed, what needs to come back down. Um, and so, you know, it, it's the, the the answer is sort of uh, easy to point out. Um, there's like a little itty bitty uh, uh, like cloud download icon that shows up near the file name in the finder. You know, so like if you know what to look for, you know it's there. Excuse me, but um, what what sort of trips people up in this uh, scenario is okay. Well, what if you Take your computer and you go off of your internet connection at home. What if you're traveling? What if you are at a hotel where you know the hotel Wi-Fi is there in name only, but is you know really terrible Wi-Fi as most hotels are? Um, you know, then that that file that you thought you had access to is suddenly gone. And then what do you do? How do you make sure that that's there? So, you know. Um, there's there's that um, uh, I also cover like like using selective sync uh, in Dropbox, which um, you know I don't know I, I've been using it for a long time because I I do a lot in Dropbox, um, but you know th- there's a lot in my Dropbox folder that I don't really use on a regular basis. I don't really need, but I like having it there. Um, you know, like a lot of old archived um, work stuff um, and. You know, like you don't necessarily need that on your drive all the time, and so there's an option to say selective sync, which is which is uh, you know only only sync these folders, like these folders that I'm actively using. Um, <laughs> to give you an example, um, because I've I've worked with Joe Kissel um, on several books um, back like in the early days of Take Control, I edited several of his books, and so. Um, his take control uh, Dropbox folder is shared with me. Okay. Well, you know how many books Joe has written. <laughs> it's it's absurd. Yeah. And and so if I didn't use Selective Sync, like I would have all those files on my hard drive. You know, projects that I have nothing to do with. Um, you know that I you know. Good for you, Joe, but I don't care that you're <laughs> writing about this particular topic, you know. And so, so using Selective Sync, I can just say, you know, um, the the Take Control Joe folder, I don't need that. So, um, you know, just just hide that from me. 
that also introduces a complication, um, which is, okay, so let's say um, I do selectively sync just a few folders. And that, that means then that that data that I've chosen not to include on my hard drive is just up at Dropbox. But that sets off all sorts of alarm bells in my head, which means, wait, there's only one copy of this data somewhere. And, you know, my, my, my time machine backups won't get it because it's not coming down. Um, you know, like I would have to, you know, make an effort to manually, uh, you know, back them up, archive them on another drive. So what do you do then? In my case, um, I have a couple of options. Like I have an old Mac Mini that's just a you know a file server in the house that's got music and stuff on it. Um, so I have Dropbox set up there, and and it's just set to to grab everything, uh, except for Joe's folder. Sorry, Joe. Um, and so uh, you know, so so that way I I actually do have that that in the event that Dropbox you know suddenly. Uh, goes out of business or they suffer some, you know, unlikely massive data uh, breach, you know, whatever. Um, but it's not something that you immediately think about because you're like, oh, here's my file. My file's over here. Everything's good until it's not. Go back to Dropbox for a second um, yeah. or, or the, the selective sync concept. Yeah. As far as I know, and honestly, I haven't checked this out recently, the, the way that you could do the selective sync concept for the individual user, you had to go into the preferences and you had to check off, you know, in which what you wanted where. The business yeah. accounts now, and I don't think this is rolled out to individuals, but the business mm. accounts have really taken that that whole concept and improved it a lot, because now I can just go down and and in the finder, you know, right click on a folder and say, you know, don't sync this. And oh. it will disappear from my, my no scratch that the files <laughs> will disappear you know but they're in in their place are like you said about the iCloud drive they're basically placeholders aliases if you will click it and as long as you're on an internet connection it comes right back down and I'm hoping they will do that for the individual users because it's it's very cool it's very well done and it's something I wish Apple would do that the, the whole smart management thing is great. But I'd like to be the one to decide what it's yeah. managing and what it isn't. And and I know, you know, ninety ninety eight percent of the time it's gonna be fine. But it's mm -hmm. that two percent that worries me. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, you also have no control over over what is being uh, removed. Um, and in fact, uh, it's it's a little bit confusing unless you dig into it. Um, because for example, if you have a folder let's say in your documents folder. Um, if you have a folder and it shows up with the little iCloud icon that says that that it's um, that there are files that can be downloaded from iCloud that are not on, on the drive. Well, I look at that and I'm like, oh, so it deleted that the contents of that whole folder um, to make room, okay, fine. Well, that's not the case. If you open up the folder, you'll see, like if you have just one file that has been removed for space reasons, it it flags it with that with that cloud icon, you know. So like it's a little misleading there, um, yeah. Yeah, um, not, and <laughs> again, this is. I mean, when, when did this some of the stuff premiere? Was it Sierra? Uh, yeah, I want to say C Sierra or maybe Mavericks for the iCloud stuff. I honestly, um, I'm trying to remember which one that when you when you did a fresh install. It asks you if you wanted to store your documents folder in yeah. the cloud. I want to say Sierra, so like two years ago. Yeah, so it's not exactly a, a brand new concept, but it's also in early stages. Yeah. So, and that that doesn't excuse any of the the issues that we're talking about or questions, and and I mean the the things work. I I have to say that how I've used it, I haven't had any kind of failure. Mm -hmm. At all, mm -hmm. I. Right. In fact, I honestly, to be really fair, I haven't even had an inconvenience. Um, it's almost the idea of having an inconvenience than actually experiencing one. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's. Um, I'm 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 laughing because it it's it, it it's that mix of like like well. If you're not afraid of losing your data, then that's when something's going to happen that <laughs> will make you lose your data, which makes means you should be afraid of losing your data. Like it's that it's that 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 bad negative feedback loop, yeah. um, you know. And 
part of the um, uh, part of the, the the ethos of this book, um, you know, th- th- there are certainly things in the book that you know you may never have to deal with, um, or something that you'll have to deal with later on. Um, but part of the ethos is, you know, like like this is such a fundamental topic that impacts all of us. You know, like you are always using storage. Um, that that just having, you know, like the a good several layers of understanding of what's going on, like like that helps immeasurably in case something goes wrong. Or, you know, not even, you know, to, to be like doom and gloom, um, like having that knowledge so that when you realize that, all right, my storage is full, what am I going to do next? Am I going to buy, you know, uh, an eight terabyte hard disk? that I connect and I have to like, you know, find uh, a, an open power plug that can plug that in. Um, do I have enough ports on my Mac? Do I need to get a, you know, a, a, a dock, like all of that? Um, or should I get a network attached storage, you know, like uh, have have a NAS on my network where I'm not needing to connect it all the time to my computer directly. It just sits there. Other people can use it, um, you know, like like those questions are going to come up because we're using more and more storage. And so knowing that, you know, knowing what some of the options are and more importantly, I think some of, of, of the thinking behind, you know, like, like here are things that you should pay attention to. And there are other things that, you know, may not be as important. Uh, and, and that's, that's also part of the goal of, of, of the book. Jeff, do you give folks any kind of buying advice or shopping advice uh, on what they need to, I guess, what features they need to look for in what kind of storage? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, no, no, like real specific things. Um, uh, well, no, actually, I, I take that back. I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so, yes, there, there is some buying advice. Um, uh, like in, in the case of the, the NAS, for example, um, you know, a big chunk of that chapter is just, you know, like like when you're going to look for a NAS, these are the things you should pay attention to. And these are the, like like in in sort of an order of importance, um, because, you know, believe me, after having done it and researched it, you know, you think, oh, well, uh, network attached storage, that's great. It, it's like a little box that I connect to Ethernet and then I just have all my files. Yay. But there are. Uh, you know, so many different models. There are some that are geared toward consumers. There are some geared toward photographers. There are some geared for small enterprise and big enterprise. And, you know, um, do you need a NAS that has an Intel processor versus, you know, like some other processor that you probably have never heard of? You know, like, like those sorts of things. Um, I do... I don't give specific advice in terms of like, you know, go buy a Synology or go buy a, a, a QNAP um, because, you know, like that's going to depend on your your circumstances. Um, I use Synology as an example because that's what I have. Um, but, you know, it's it, it's strictly in the, you know, um, uh there is a way that you can back up your NAS, and usually there's an app running on the NAS that will do a backup, and here's an example of that. Um, the, the one time that I, I specifically recommend um, like, like a, a purchasing point um, is uh, if you're getting hard drives to fill a NAS, uh, you want to make sure that you are buying uh, hard drives that have been designed for a NAS. So just throwing in any old hard drive um, isn't as good of an idea as buying something that's been specifically designed for this kind of access, this sort of always on, uh, you know, that sort of traffic. Yeah. I'm, I'm right now in the process of testing out, uh, Drobo's new network mm. attached storage, uh-huh. um, device because I've already have one and this is a new one. And I've, I've, people have heard me say this a million times. You know, I, I love the Drobo stuff because it is about as simple a NAS as you can get, mm-hmm. um, you know, and there are all the other benefits that go along with Drobo. But uh, it's something I wish more people would consider because it is a lot – I find it a lot more flexible, honestly, than I thought it would be. And yeah. I find the transfer speeds to be more than acceptable. 
Um, you know, are they as fast as a connected hard drive? No, probably not. No, yeah. definitely not. But <laughs> yeah, let's be let's be fair about it. Even even at USB two speeds, you know, it may not be mm-hmm. quite as fast if you're really char- throwing around a lot of stuff. On the other hand, how many times are you really throwing around that much stuff? So yeah. you know, for for the average person, and or maybe it's a better way to say the the average use of a long-term storage device, of a NAS device, Mm -hmm. you're not going to notice the hassle. And it does mean that, therefore, you don't have to be running a whole lot of cables and plugging and unplugging things. You just, it pops up on your, uh, on your, your finder sidebar and you access it that way and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, that, that also brings, uh, uh, brings up another topic that I cover in the book that people run into is like like the topic of RAID, um, you know, re- redundant array of independent disks. And um, like like RAID is, is just this sort of uh, a giant, um, what's a good word? It's, it, it's like the boogeyman of hard disks because... <laughs> Because there are some people who are like, oh, well, you need a RAID because it, it you know, um, you put together a whole bunch of disks and you get this, this you know, larger amount of storage and it's great. Um, and then there are also other people who are like, no, like, don't even deal with a RAID because, you know, there are different levels. Like, you know, you can build your own RAID. Is it going to be a RAID 0? Is it going to be a RAID 1? RAID 5? Maybe RAID 10? <laughs> you know, and you're like, what does it all mean? I really have no idea. Um, and so, you know, again, like like I, I cover all of that um, and, and cover it in, you know, uh, sort of real world uh, uh, usages um, because, you know, when it does come up, you want to be able to, to say, okay, like, I at least have a good idea of, of what this means. Like I know that for most things, I do not want a RAID zero because that will give me fast performance. But if something, you know, if, if one of the drives dies, then that's the ball game. Like like the, the whole thing is is no longer useful. Um, you know, but, and so then people are like, well, what you want is a RAID one because what it does is it mirrors and it makes you know like copies of your data. So you have like two copies everywhere. You're like, yay! Now I don't need to do backups. You're like, no, 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 <laughs> it's not a backup. You know. Um, but then you also have things like like the Drobo and uh, Synology and um, like like they have their that their own flavors of raid um which is great in the sense that you know like like especially with drobo you know you you pop the drives in and you don't have to worry about whether um you know what what size the drives are like like it it just handles all that um if you are you know trying to set up a raid um and you know you have like like a terabyte drive and a two terabyte drive and a 500 gig drive and you put them all together and you put them together with with you know raid five um you're going to have a big chunk of disk space that just doesn't get used at all you know and you're like but 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 I, I I just put in you know two and a half terabytes of storage. Why do I only have you know like one and a half or one terabyte that I can actually use? And so, you know, again, like you don't have to be afraid of all this stuff because uh, you know like like the, the explanations are here and we'll we'll walk you through what you need to know to make you have a better idea. A, a, a better understanding, you know, and, and especially, um, the, I guess this is me going into full sale mode. So forgive me for a second. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, all of these options that, that we're talking about, um, they're not inexpensive options. You know, you can definitely get like a, uh, you know, like a two terabyte USB powered external hard drive for, you know, a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, which is great. Like that's, you know, 150 bucks, like that's still real money, but, um, you know, like, like that's a possibility, but, you know, you start talking about a, a NAS, you start putting together RAID arrays, um, you know, like, like that's, that's a, a serious investment, even, you know, on, on a small scale. And of course it can go much higher and much, much more expensive. And so, you know, buying a $13 book that helps you with all that, that makes all of those purchasing decisions better. And it sales. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if you I, I and I've okay, now I'll go into sale mode for you. 
I appreciate it. Thank if you. this if this <laughs> if this is something that you need to understand, and it's not that hard to understand. I mean, I was no. I was chuckling to myself earlier when you were explaining something. You know, when is a NAS a RAID, and when is a RAID a NAS, and can a NAS be a RAID, or can a RAID not be? An, <laughs> you know, I mean, and and we're throwing around a, back, a lot of acronyms, and they can sound a little scary, but you don't have to be a geek, and you don't have to you know spend three days researching this stuff. Jeff has it laid out for you pretty easy. And if you if you really think about what your honest to god needs are, and you know, then you try to think about okay, I've got my needs now. What are my needs going to be next year? Mm -hmm. Then you start figuring out okay, do I need something like a Drobo that you can constantly upgrade the storage size? Um, and the good news about all this is really storage has gotten so cheap now that you can buy comparatively, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, to your point, the raids and the nasses, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you can drop a lot of money in those, but you also get a whole lot of storage for the money. And if you do it right, you get a lot of safety and security for the money yes. too. Yes, so, absolutely. You know, th th this is this is one of those topics that can be a little daunting, but but please, folks, don't put it off, especially if you have just one copy of your stuff anywhere, especially your photos. Um, I, I've once again, I've, I was watching <laughs> something on the news, you know, the other day where, um, actually I was in Las Vegas and this family had moved to Las Vegas. They were staying in a hotel. Guess what? Their, their car got stolen along with the trailer that they were pulling with it and oh, everything is gone. Everything was there. And the thing that they were pleading with the thieves on TV, they're pleading, take the stuff, take the car. No problem. Just give us back our photos. Yes. And you just yes. think, oh, my God, you know, again, you know, somebody that didn't have something yeah. backed up or stored safely or whatever, and it breaks your heart. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. So so you, uh, you've, well. <laughs> you've alluded to the fact that this is a $13 book. Um, yes, I think I got that right. Okay. Out of, I, I'm always kind of curious because we there are a lot of topics here. How, how long is the book, Jeff? Uh, it's 128 pages, I okay. think. Okay. Yeah. So. so it's it's not super huge. Um, but, you know, it's 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 very uh, it's it's meaty, but not fatty. No, that that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that didn't work. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> it's 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 a, a a good, compact, concise guide that has a lot of meat in it. How about that? Lean and mean. Lean and mean. Yes. There, you go. there you go. There we go. There, there we go. go. Yes. Um, and it, it, if I could throw in one last topic, please. again, you know, we're not. Oh, please. Um, the, and the other thing that it covers, um, because we've been talking mostly about like, like you know, uh, expanding hard drives and buying hard drives and all. Um, there's also a huge section in the book that just talks about disk utility. Um, the, the, the disk utility application that is, you know, like the essential troubleshooting um, disk tool uh, on the Mac. Um, and so, you know, it talks about, uh, you know, what is disk utility actually doing when it's running and looking for errors? How do you, uh, you know, uh, how do you uh, scan and, and, and repair a startup disk? Um, but then tying into a lot of the other topics, uh, you know, disk utility is also used for creating partitions and uh, making disk images and when you'd want to do that. Um, and, you know, again, like going back to APSF, um, the way partitions and volumes work is very different. So if you have been, you know, um, taking your your hard drive, let's say you have a terabyte hard drive, and in the past you've been splitting that into like two 500 gig partitions for whatever reason. Maybe you you know you have like work uh, documents in one partition and and home documents in the other, and you just want that sort of that that barrier between them. Um, with APSF. Uh, you can do partitions, but there's actually a better way of of um, the way that that AP APFS uh, the way the new file system uh, uh, handles volumes, for example. Like you don't need to do partitions anymore. You can just create a volume, and and that volume will will shrink or grow as needed. If you've ever like you know run into the situation where you had made a partition and your partition got full. And you then had to like repartition your hard drive. Um, you know, typically under HFS Plus, the 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 sort of um, file system standard that Apple's used for you know, decades, really. Um, 
uh, you know, you would have to basically like wipe it and start over and and then reload your data back on. Um, and so with with APFS, you don't have to do that, but people might not know that. So it's it's you know covers that 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 sort of stuff too because disk utility is such an essential uh, uh, utility uh, for working with storage. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, and and I'm going to save us both a couple emails, um, and I don't think it'll detract from the book sales. Okay. But differentiate between a volume and a partition. What what do you mean by that? If I'm if I'm talking about one physical mm -hmm. device, what's the difference? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I'm going to do like a little extra plug for my book because okay. <laughs> I came up with a really good metaphor for for for, for describing this, um, and. Uh, that it's too long to go into here, but basically, um, so think of a, a partition as basically like, like a brick wall. So you have a, a warehouse and, um, your warehouse is, is big and you want to split it into two pieces. Okay. Um, under, uh, Mac OS extended, uh, sorry, HFS plus it's, it's called both. Um, what you would do is you would build like a wood or brick wall between the, in the middle of, of the warehouse. So you have like two different areas. Um, and then, you know, you could store stuff in both areas. And then when one gets full and you need to add more to that area, um, in order to, to make that partition bigger, you'd have to destroy the wall, rebuild it somewhere else, and, you know, start over that way. Um, under APFS, um, instead of thinking of a wall, um, basically think of, the the warehouse itself is a partition. Okay, it's it's treated. Um, it it's actually called a container, but it's it's treated like a partition. So so it's like one one thing, and you want to split that into two separate sections. Well, rather than building a wall, you're just going to put some tape, some of that you know r really cool uh, yellow and black uh, you know warning tape that. You know, you see in like you know, airplane uh, construction zones and things, um, and so so you put tape down the middle, and and so everybody knows like this this side is for one task, the other side is for the other task, and then the first task uh, starts getting full, that whole area gets full. Well, instead of uh, you know having to tear down a wall, all you do is you pull up the tape and you just put it down, giving yourself some more room, and. It will just do that dynamically. So if if one side needs an extra hundred gigs of space, then it just takes it from the other side. But there's nothing that you have to do. It all happens in the background. All you need to know is you have enough space for that volume, and the other volume will just adapt. And you can add and and remove volumes at will without having to, um, you know, go through the whole process of format, reformatting the disk and, and all of that. Got it. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. so. I mean, I, I know what it is, but I want to make sure folks do understand yeah. it because it's, yeah. once again, it's those are terms that I think sometimes in the past may have been used interchangeably and now they yes. have different meanings and yeah. you have to make sure that you know what you're talking about. So. Folks, if you want to know what you're talking about, go get Jeff's book. <laughs> TakeControlBooks.com is, is where you can find it. It's mm -hmm. $13, and the author is Mr. Jeff Carlson. That's Jeff, me. Thank you. Thank you. This, this was good. This was fun. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it again. Okay, let's do it. When's the next book? Uh, tomorrow. Okay. No. <laughs> Talk to you in a, in a couple days. <laughs> uh, no, I, I have another book coming out toward the end of the year. Oh, great. Okay. Well, then, yeah. And we'll talk Not to you about book, a different book. Okay. Good. Well, we'll talk to you about that. Um, in the meantime, if while, in between books, where can folks find you? Uh, go to jeffcarlson.com. Uh, that's sort of the, the central place. But I would also, if I can throw in a plug, um, I have started a new podcast with Kirk McElhern. Um, oh, which, of course, we talked about on your show. You did. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, photoactive. So it's, it's photoactive.co uh, is the website. And uh, we are basically talking about photo uh, photography topics um, with a bit of an Apple um, – an Apple slant, um, mostly in the sense that we're not hung up on gear and pixel peeping and uh, a lot of 
uh, sort of photography rabbit holes that that a lot of other people get preoccupied with. Like we want to talk about making photos and enjoying photos and 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 that. And so uh, uh, yeah, so that's photoactive.co. It's been great fun. And I have to say, I've I've really been enjoying it because I've it feels like a a photography uh, podcast for someone at my level and maybe just a little a little higher and that's that's exactly where i want to be i kind of want to know what's going on and 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 be able to understand it but i also want you to challenge me and teach me a few things and so far it's been the the, the episode on on jpeg versus raw was excellent oh so, good good yeah Thank please you very folks much. go check it out go check it out jeff we'll talk to you soon i look forward to it Thanks, all right jeff. take care Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I hope we talk to you soon as well. Um, if you have questions, comments, please drop me an email, chuck at macvoices.com. You can leave them in our Facebook group, uh, Mac, the Mac Voices group on Facebook, or contact me on Twitter. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. <laughs>